Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Distinct Herbicide and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to Corn School. Today we're going to dig into corn planting, specifically the impact planting date planting depth, and some cold weather can have on emergence and stand establishment. Uh, Now, there's been a lot of work done on this topic, and today we're going to look at a really interesting study uh, conducted by BASF in 2020. And uh, to talk about it, I'm joined now by Ken Kerr from BASF. Hey, Ken, how's it going? Great, Bird. Good morning. How are you? I'm I'm doing well, sir. I'm doing well, and great to have you on the Corn School. Um, Now, Ken, Tell us a little bit about this trial. Um, it was designed to uh, to test stamina, one of your seed treatments, but you did learn a lot about how corn seed behaved last year in 2020 in some pretty cold soils. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, a quick memory test for, for Southern Ontario growers. When we were planting in the spring of 2020, we got started in pretty good time. Uh, quite a bit of corn in late April. We had good soil conditions, but cooler soil conditions. So we were kind of marginal on the soil temperature aspect. And then that only got worse as we approached Mother's Day weekend where there was snow in the forecast and some frost, which presented us with an opportunity to uh, to set aside a little bit of space at the BSF research farm and plant a few strips of corn at different uh, planting intervals around that cold weather episode. And uh, number one, evaluate the stamina of pyrocostrobin seed treatment, but also just to understand some, some cold drink of water dynamics for seed corn in general. So we had some interesting findings as a result of that opportunity. Yeah. So, hey, let's dig into them. Now, you did, you had uh, a silt clay loam, um, four planting dates, May 7, 8, 9, and 13. Um, yeah. And you, you, uh, you planted at two and three inches. And you did some a flag test here, you know, a testing emergence, you know, measuring that day one of emergence, day two, and day three, five. And let's take a look at some of those results. Um, you know, here is the May 7th planting date, 24 hours before a freeze. Tell us about that. What are we seeing here? Yeah, so a common question that all agronomists get and we, you know, from our farmer customers as, as that cold weather approaches is how long should I plant for? So, I mean, that, this is why we started at 24 hours prior to that, to that cold event is we wanted to evaluate what kind of variability does that introduce. And we can see here from this slide, you know, two inches of pretty standard planting depth for corn, right? Uh, there's some, some talk of deeper planting depths to uh, down to three inches in the industry, and that's actually an early planting recommendation on some sandy soils just to prevent frost damage. So we wanted to test that theory as well. Uh, what we're really seeing here in this slide, uh, number one, obviously, the added protection is bringing some benefit. That's no great surprise. But what I see in this slide as well, we weren't just getting cooler heading into that particular weekend, but we were pretty dry at that time. So we're all seeds getting an equal dose of that initial drink of water, which was probably still a fairly decent temperature. It, it shows, you know, the flag test really proved that that we were dry at that time, right? And we didn't have that uniform water uptake and that nice, nice consistent moisture in the seed bed. Yeah, so you got some, uh, the blue is the emergence on uh, on day one, and yes. uh, the yellow is day two. And you, are you pretty happy with the, that level of emergence there, Ken? Yeah, you know, if I was planting into dry soils, I would expect to see, you know, spreads like that. And I would also expect to see because we were, you know, we headed into some cool weather. I would expect to see that that deeper planting depth didn't perform nearly as consistently, right? We, you know, that, that big difference is expected. But this is what I would expect to see when when conditions are about to go a little bit south and a little bit colder. But we were also dry in the furrow at the time that seed went into the ground. So yeah. not not surprised at all. A little disappointed that... We didn't get a little bit fuller than 32,000 population when we're dropping 34,000. Yeah. Let's speed ahead to, to, due day, to a couple of days later, May 9th. And now, this was planted in the snow. Um, this looks pretty good. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, so I guess I guess mechanically planting in the snow is going to be a little tough because I think it was all we could do to get this strip into the ground without, uh, you know, making snowballs on the press wheels of the planter, right? So uh, it's certainly an interesting time, but... Yeah, this this shows that really, even though the environment above ground has changed drastically in 24 hours, it really hasn't below ground, right? Um, we're still seeing pretty similar 
pretty similar trends in terms of day one, day two, and then day three to five emergence. And our ending populations were really not all that different. Hmm. Let's uh, speed ahead uh, 72 hours. Um, and this is a, a much different um, piece of uh, uh, research here. Uh, you know, you got a big drop in early emergence, more uneven. Um, tell us what's happening here. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, this is where it uh, this is where it really starts to go downhill, right? Um you know, the, the added protection of stamina did provide us a pathway to get to pretty much full stand, right? We dropped 34,000, we were over 33,000. But, you know, in the bigger picture of things, I think we've listened to enough high yield presentations in our day, Burn, to know that high yield really starts with uniformity and stand establishment, right? And when we see that diversity in the blue and the yellow areas, we're seeing, we're seeing a lack of uniform stand establishment. So that snow melt or just the prolonged cold period so you know the day that the day the snow fell the soils were warmer than this particular time right the 72 hours later the, the soils only got colder after the snowfall and that's reflected in the emergence pattern that we're seeing here mm. so a couple of takeaways here ken i mean first thing i see here you know uh, you know for farmers you know it, it looks like you really need to avoid you know having that newly planted corn take a, a its first drink of water being a cold one yeah so when i get that question should i keep planting in advance of cold weather my my immediate answer is is what are the conditions right here right now in the field do we have warm uh, a warm trench or a warm furrow with good moisture to facilitate that first drink of water it might get cold in 48 hours but can we get that first drink of water into this seed now and keep on going um you know that, that's kind of the first thing i work through and then there's other functions in that conversation. How many acres do I have to get across? What's the weather forecast seven to 10 days out? I mean, we also remember the spring of 2019, which was probably for a lot of farmers that uh, that are listening to this broadcast, probably the worst spring planting season that many of them have gone through here in Ontario. Hey, final point, Ken, that is, you know, what, what do we learn here about planting depth? You know, are we going to struggle if we plant too deep, too early into that type of situation? Yes, yeah, so there's validity to the argument, especially on lighter, more frost-prone soils burned to plant deeper than two and a half inches. If you're going in ultra early, let's say April 15th to 20th, you know, in, in you know, the tobacco or gravel plains of, uh, of southern Ontario, you know, you're planting deeper to protect that sprout or that uh, emerging coleoptile from getting dinged by frost event, right? So that's that's a bit of a separate episode in itself. But in terms of the overall three-inch planting depth, um, we're not ready to dismiss it. But I think what this exercise shows in conjunction with some other research in the industry is you know, this is really an ideal planting conditions and good soil scenario, right? Um, you know, I'm not ready to promote three inches, but we kind of see we're moving to the deeper side. We can make that work, but we're also demonstrating here where that is not going to work, and that's in those less than ideal conditions. Yeah. Hey, Ken, uh, some great insights. Always uh Tremendous to have you on Corn School. Thanks for stopping by. Hey, no problem. Thanks, Burns.